Welcome to the Retirement Ready Investor Seminar. Uh, my name is Danielle Kirk Ferguson. I am the Senior Marketing Specialist at Congressional Federal Credit Union and also the moderator for today's presentation. Congressional Federal provides innovative and affordable financial products and services, education, and community outreach to the Congressional FCU family, which includes the House of Representatives, uh, the Congressional Support Offices on Capitol Hill, in addition to affinity and non-affinity selected employment groups. Established on July 9, 1953, with just eight members, uh, or eight employees, I should say, uh, with only $40 in deposits, uh, we've grown to over 46,000 members and still counting. Congressional Federal uh, has developed a reputation as a trusted credit union based on its proven track record of reliability to its members. Our presentation today will run a little over an hour, uh, leaving time for questions and answers throughout the presentation. Uh, also, I mentioned earlier that we are streaming on Facebook Live, so if you miss anything throughout the presentation, please go on our Facebook page, like us, follow us, um, so you can see the presentation again. Uh, you will also receive an email of the handouts uh, that we will be what we provided to you today, so that also will be available. I just wanted to say hello to our Facebook Live uh, members that are joining us right now. Um, if you have any questions, please enter them into the comments section on there. Um, so we want you to feel it as a part of the presentation as we are. Also, uh, I have the evaluation forms that I would love for you all to fill out. Um, there's actually a catch to these evaluation forms. We're going to do a raffle for $20 Amazon gift cards. Uh, so if you complete and submit the evaluation forms, they're located in your folders and they're also going to be online as well. Um, just complete and submit them and you enter to win a $20 Amazon gift card. So I do know that we're going to cover a lot of information uh, this evening, so if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. All right, so let me introduce our presenters. Uh, today's presenters are John Moran, Michael Holstrom, and Bill Fraylin. John is a wealth advisor with the Congressional Financial Network and has over 35 years of experience in banking and financial services. He has a bachelor's degree in finance and holds his series 7, 63, 65, and life and health insurance licenses. He works closely with his clients to fully understand their personal circumstances, their overall financial situations, objectives, risk tolerances, and liquidity needs. Michael is also a wealth advisor uh, with the Congressional Financial Network. He has his bachelor's degree in finance and holds his series 7, 63, and 66, and life and health insurance licenses. Michael spends his time educating his clients and helping them make proven, uh, purpose-driven financial decisions while covering all areas of uh, personal and small business finance, from cash and debt management to investments and retirement planning, asset protection, tax management strategies, and estate planning strategies. Bill is a nationally known elder law attorney, the founder and shareholder of the estate planning and elder law firm DC. He is listed as one of the premier elder law attorneys by First Lawyers in America. Known as a prolific speaker, uh, Bill has spoken to over 400 audiences and venues uh, throughout, throughout the um, United States. He's also appeared on television and radio programs. He has lectured on the subjects of estate and incapacity planning, chronic care advocacy, asset protection, qualifying for the government entitlements, and obtaining quality long-term care. So let's, let's please welcome our presenters. So since this is uh, this presentation is in a Q&A format, I think the best way to kind of get this all started is by asking you all a question. So, my first question to the audience is, how many of you wish you could just retire now? <laughs> I should see both, <laughs> both hands go up. Yes. So, I think one of the major questions that we can ask our panelists is, how do you know when is the best time to retire? And how important is it to have a vision for the type of retirement you actually want? I'll take that one. Um, well, starting out with how important it is to have a vision, I think it foundationally 
having a vision of what you want retirement to look like is the most important thing. Um, you know, we use the term financial planning in our industry a lot, and the essence of financial planning is planning toward uh, achieving a goal. And so you have to define some goals for yourself for uh, what you want retirement to look like, and uh, we can help bridge the gap between your goals and your financial resources and, and kind of line up when you know, it is a good time to retire based on how much money you have. But it starts by uh, identifying what your ideal is and then defining the reality with what's actually possible relative to what your ideal is with that in mind. retirement, I think really the most common mistake is a lack thereof, yeah. a lack of planning for retirement. Um, again, we've got to have something to work toward to actually accomplish uh, you know, what you want your future to look like. So you know, fast forward 20 years from now, if you haven't uh, done some planning, everybody's got goals, everybody's got priorities and personal values, whether you're identifying them or not. Uh, if we're not planning toward those things, then you know you're going to look back on on your uh, situation and go, man, I really should be better. Uh, this isn't what I wanted for myself. I think one of the most common ones we've probably seen is people will go into retirement and say they're retired, and five years later they see them working again. Mm -hmm. um, I think that probably just comes from, as Michael said, just lack of planning, uh, not really knowing, you know, how much money you really you need to kind of go through that period in your life. So I, yeah, definitely agree. Anyone want to add anything to that? Well, not well, just from the state planning perspective uh, and a retirement perspective. <coughs> In both plannings, one of the things we tell people is, is you've got to know what you have. I mean, I can't count the number of people that grandmother's fallen and broken a hip, and we have to go into her kitchen table and take the, the, the 25 years of papers and sort through them and do a spreadsheet to see what she has. That's the hard way to do it. The smart and easy way to do it is while you're confident and in good stead, make a list, take a leaking pad, what, what's out there? Where is it held? What's the account number? And, and, then, yeah, and then when we talk about the documents, do I have any of these? Do I need them? And, and, and just start it with an inventory. Because if you don't, I mean, if you don't have any of that, I mean, you're, 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 you're essentially the same boat as grandma is with all those explanation of benefits on her table. She doesn't know, and no one will know for a long time. secure and put it on a disk and then once you capture the image you can easily provide it to your investment advisor to your CPA to your kids to your parents here here's where all the data is because with our clients we'll have a zip drive and say I want you to give it all because we're going to put it on your key rig so when they ask for anything you're like do you have a computer we can give it to you now whether you put it on a, on, on in the cloud or someplace else, those are beyond my pay grade. But the fact is, you can, keep, you can still just burn it on a disk and keep it in your safe or keep it in a drawer and have it there. And again, uh, probably some of you know the security much better than I do, but there's different means. But by having the data captured, even with your driver's license, a snap of the photo, and that, then you have the data. I've got something to add to that as well. You know, when we're working with members of Congressional Federal Credit Union, we're helping them plan for retirement. 
we just give them a checklist of all the information that we're looking for to really understand their situation well, all the different statements of assets, debts, uh, insurance policies even, and we'll compile all that into our financial planning software. So if you're doing active financial planning with us, we're going to be able to time to provide you with a quick snapshot of everything you've got. Um, I think having that information backed up somewhere on your side of things is important too. Uh, just like Bill was saying, so that if you need that in a quick hurry, uh, you've got it there, Andy. So. I'd like to add one thing as well. Uh, you probably can't tell from looking up here, but I'm the oldest one here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to uh, pass on an old school method, which is to keep a copy of that list in a safe deposit box. Uh, uh, and let uh, people that you think might be helping you out uh, in that situation, if you're incapacitated or if you pass on, uh, you make sure they have the names of your, uh, your your planners, your financial advisors, and I would say you can share with us the fact that you have a safe depo deposit box at uh, such and such bank. Don't give us a cop uh, one of the keys, but just let us know you have them so that when <coughs> someone uh, gets in touch with us about your situation, we'll have the names also of, of uh, other key people. That's a good question, and uh, again, being the old, oldest one up here, I'm familiar with the old school method, which, which would say that uh, one simple method was to take your age and subtract, uh, subtract your age from 100, and that's how much you should have in stocks. So if you're 65 years old, you have 35% stocks and 65% in bonds. And, and uh, that just doesn't apply anymore. Uh, so a common uh, myth that we hear these days and mistakes that can be made uh, is that people think that when they get to that investment, if they're mid 60s or close to retirement or in retirement, that they really have to uh, get significantly more conservative in their portfolio. And uh, that's not necessarily the case. Of course, it will fluctuate based on individual basis, and, and that's what a, a good planner will do or what we do to find out a specific situation. Um, but uh, one of the things you have to watch out for is becoming too conservative. Uh, people are living longer today, obviously, so they have to plan for a longer life. 